Well, voted yet? Election day for the June primary is just four days away, and if you live in San Francisco, you will decide whether or not to recall District Attorney Chesa Boudin. It's Proposition H, and it turns out to be the most expensive ballot measure. Yeah, there. according to the San Francisco Ethics Commission, those fighting to keep the DA in the office have spent more than $3 million. Those who want him out have spent more than $7 million. NBC Bay Area Sergio Quintana is in San Francisco with a detailed look at the measure and why political experts say it's being watched nationwide. When former public defender Chesa Boudin became the city's chief prosecutor in January 2020, he was part of a new wave of reform-minded DAs around the country. Just two and a half years later, he's now among a few who are facing recall or other removal efforts. Supporters of the reforms District Attorney Boudin represents say his tenure was immediately tainted by the difficulties everyone felt because of a once-in-a-generation pandemic and the lockdown that followed. But I think it's unfortunate that people have taken advantage of the vulnerable position we're all in to try and exploit a political agenda around recalls. Christine Soto de Berry is the executive director of the Prosecutors Alliance, a statewide group of former prosecutors who've been working to reform the criminal justice system. She says survey after survey shows voters support the reforms they're trying to make happen. They're interested in exploring other ways to get to safety. They are not committed to a punishment-only approach, a jail-only approach. They want services, they want supports, because they know, like we all do, that that's more likely to solve the problem. Boudin supporters also say working with San Francisco's police department and the police officers' union has been a challenge, something Soto de Berry says she also saw firsthand when she worked for former District Attorney George Gascon. The current DA, as the previous DAs, have had good working relationships with the chief of police. Not this DA or the several previous DAs that we've all embraced and loved have had a good relationship with the police union. Like Gascon, Boudin has filed charges against police officers for misconduct, indicting three officers in three separate incidents early in his tenure has endeared him to police reformers who say he's following through on campaign promises to hold police officers accountable. It's also strained his relationship with police rank and file. Some of Boudin's most vocal critics say they also support reforms, but they don't like how D.A. Boudin is doing it. I think it sounded very good in theory, but in practice, we saw the results. We saw people getting hurt, people getting killed. Leanna Louis says she first became interested in Boudin's job performance in November 2021, when a large group of looters ransacked Union Square. At the time, she was part of one of Chinatown's citizen patrol groups. After a group of them destroyed downtown, came to San Francisco Chinatown and destroyed the 400 and 500 block of Grand Avenue. And my team and I, we helped the police catch four looters. She became even more interested after watching a series of violent attacks on the city's AAPI community and studying how three cases in particular were handled. 84-year-old Ron Jin Liao and 69-year-old An Lei, who were violently attacked and beaten, and 84-year-old Vicha Radhanapakti, who was killed. The families of the men have since criticized the district attorney's office for not seeking hate crime enhancements and other issues. One of the victims, An Lei, even sued the DA so he could testify on his own behalf in court. We believe that Chester Bodine is not the right person to do this job because he consistently, consistently shows that he is siding with the criminals. He is a former public defender, and that's his, all he knows. He doesn't understand what it is to represent a victim. DA Boudin has recently launched a victim services unit specifically for the AAPI community and has targeted the outbreak of widespread property crimes when his investigators broke up what they allege is a major fencing operation at a tenderloin boba shop. Still, University of San Francisco professor of politics James Taylor says recent polling suggests the DA is at major risk of being recalled. Liberals are sort of sacrificing their own to avoid the coming conservative backlash, which is inevitable. Professor Taylor says polling suggests the recall is supported by generally progressive and liberal San Franciscans who are concerned about the perception of crime all around them. It bothers people more than January 6th. It bothers people more than some of the mass shootings we've seen is to see everyday urban crime um, just sort of suggesting to us our society is completely out of order. He says D.A. Boudin's campaign also has a unique problem because he doesn't have someone to run against. And though political spectators in other cities and states may be weighing what his possible removal may mean for justice reforms in general, in liberal San Francisco, voters may not see much change if a different person is installed in his place.
it may be a little bit different style and they may not be as strident as Boudin, but you're not going to get a conservative in San Francisco as a DA. You're not even going to get a moderate centrist. Voters in San Francisco will have up till 8 p.m. Tuesday to decide. In San Francisco, Sergio Quintana, NBC, Bay Area News.